Um, so B is greater than 1 in scrub, B is less than 1 in decay. Um, so in these problems, what they oftentimes do, almost always, Dawson, that's fine. Um, Ooh, Dawson's going behind the wheel for his driving. Very exciting. I still remember my driving instructor. They were, it was one weird dude. Hopefully you have a normal person. Mine was like, kind of made me feel uncomfortable to be in the car. One of those kind of people. It was weird. Anywho, so in the problems they'll give you percentages. So we'll have to switch from percent to decimal and decimal to percent both ways. So just make sure you understand that. And here's our first problem. So I'm going to be highlighting some of this information after we read it. So don't write everything down because that's a waste of time. But you will need to write down what I highlight. So let's read it first. We're talking about exponential growth, number one. So since 2005, the amount of money spent at restaurants in the United States has increased about 7% each year. In 2005, about $360 billion was spent at restaurants. The trend continues about how much will be spent at restaurants in 2015. Okay, so let's highlight some key information. 2005 is key. Increase is key because that tells us it's growth. Words like increase, decrease tells you whether it's growth or decay. Um, it increases 7%. Make sure you write that down. 2005, they spent $360 billion in restaurants. It's a lot of money. If the trend continues, about how much money will be spent in 2015. So write down that information. Always, every single time I'm plugging things into an equation, I write the equation down. So y equals a times b to the x power. x is almost always some function of time. It is not always we'll do a problem today or it's not a function of time, but many times it is a function of time. So I'll give you a chance to write that down. Make sure you get outside today. It is beautiful. It's going to be beautiful all week. It's like 70 degrees all week long. So get outside and enjoy the fresh air. Especially because we're oftentimes cooped up because of COVID. So any chance you can get to get outside, do so. It's good for your mental health to get outside. Can I Got to use tap water. So sad. Yeah. Okay, so do you hit the little hand raise thing at the bottom of your screen if you're done writing all that down, just so I know. I can tell in person because they're not writing anymore. Good, good, good. Clevis, you good? Cole, you good? Frontledge, good? Megan, good? Christian, good? Put the little hand up thing if you're done writing. Okay, all of you can take it off. We're ready. So, A is the amount we started with. In this problem, it's going to be 360 billion. So Y equals 360. I'm not going to write all the zeros because it's annoying. And now we need to figure out the either growth or decay factor. We already talked about the fact that this is an increase, so we know it's growth. So here's the weirdest thing about these problems. The 360 billion represents 100% of money spent right now. So you guys can take your hand raise things off, just because otherwise I think we have a question. Thank you, Lauren. Take that off. Clevis, take it off, please. Thank you. Um, so 100% represents the 360 billion dollars we started with. Now, from that 360 billion, we're adding 7% each year. So we want to add that 7%. So 
So it's 100% that normally messes with people's head. It's just the money we start with or whatever the problem is talking about. So we get 107%. So when we're doing these math problems, we can't mix numbers and percents. Otherwise, we get answers that are massively wrong. So question for you guys at home and in person is, how the heck do you switch a percentage to a decimal? Who knows how you switch a percent to a decimal? You could write it in the chat. You could unmute your mic and tell me. What do you think? How do you switch a percent to a decimal? Multiply. Divide by 100. Divide by 100. I think that is the easiest way to do it. So to switch, we're going to write that as a helpful hint. So to switch from a percent to a decimal, divide by um, So I think that's like the best way to do it. After teaching algebra one for the 19 years I've had, that's using that method is where I see kids have the most success not making careless errors. The other way you can do it is to visualize the decimal at the end, and then you just move that decimal two to the left. So you get 1.07. So I'm going to show you on the old graphing calculator the way that I think is better than that. 107 divided by 100, and we'll get that same answer, 1.07. I'm lagging. No, you're lagging. Sorry. You'll just have to, I don't know what to do. You can listen to the recording later if it's lagging for you. Um, it's because everything's working smooth here, so that's how I can tell I'm not lagging and it's more you than me. Um, so we're going to plug in 1.07 for our growth factor. So times 1.07. Now we need to figure out what goes in for that X. Okay? Is it lagging for you too, Charlotte? Yeah? Weird. All right, we'll have the video recording, so if, if uh, you need to go back and watch it later, you can do that. Let me, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll hang up and log back in just to see if that'll help. Is it still lagging? Give me a, is it, how about this? Give me a thumbs up if it's lagging for you. So well, I, I like restarted my, uh, Page and it's it, so. Okay, so try that, restart, because that is annoying to hang up and go back in. It's not that big a deal, though, if I need to. So try to do that if you're having a lagging issue. Okay, so we need to figure out what goes in for the X. So we started at 2005, and then I want to know at 2015 how much money was spent in restaurants. How many years difference is that? One? Oh, that, uh, see, it's backwards for me, Cole, so you got to switch them. There you go. Nice. I thought you were going to do the old switcher like that. Yes, it is 10, right? So to get that exponent, all you have to do is do 2015 minus 2005, and we get 10. So that's our exponent. After 10 more years, how much money was spent in restaurants? So we have that equation now. If you haven't bought a calculator yet, buy one, please. If you haven't bought a calculator yet, bust out your phone. I'm going to put it in the graphing calculator. You want to make sure that you can get the same answer I get. Otherwise, your grade's going to be lower in math because we'll have a quiz over this stuff. Not till tomorrow, but we will have a quiz over this stuff. 
So we're going to plug this in. We have 360 billion times 1.07 raised to the 10th power, and we get 708.17 billion dollars. That's a lot of money. So 708.17. So y equals, remember you got to have units, 708.17 billion dollars. So in your homework, make sure you're always checking grades in Schoology, because I'll write down comments. For instance, Friday's assignment and Monday's assignment, there are two different problems, 42 on one and 24 on the other. Many of you have forgotten units and I wrote a little comment in your homework and said, don't forget units. What I'll start to do is, I, I like to warn you a bunch of times and then I'll start to take points off. Kind of like how I did with your proper heading on your homework, name, page number, problem numbers, and uh, period number. So. You're warned for time number one. I also warned you at time number two on your homeworks if you forgot units. So just please remember units. It's the most annoying reason to have points taken off for getting units. So this was, they said, what is an expression that represents equivalent monthly increase blah, 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 of spending in restaurants in 2005? Right here. That's our expression, including the exponent. And then they want to know how much money we spent. $708.17 billion. Okay. How's the lagging thing going? Give me a thumbs up if I'm still lagging. Kinda? Weird. All right, I'm gonna try to log out, log back in then, and hopefully that'll help it. If not, we might just have Wi-Fi instability that happens. Okay. Just waiting for the prism to start. Is it? Give me thumbs up if it's lagging still. Is it better? Not your head yes if it's better. Okay. Go. So we got that one answered. Moving on. So you got to start writing this formula down and all the letters and what all the letters mean. So, and then I'll kind of talk at you as you do that. So normally I'd have you all memorize this formula, which is a challenge, right, because there's so many letters. Um, I talked to you guys about organized use of color. This is what I think is a terrible use of organized use of color, because there are too many colors. So when you have too many colors, it just kind of loses its usefulness. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so too many colors, right, it's just, it's not even useful anymore. So I would write down all of this stuff in a single color, and then as we talk about it, if you realize there's one of these letters that's going to be harder to remember than another, I would use, for me anyways, it's best if I use a really obnoxious color because it irritates me and I remember it because I get irritated. Um, so start writing that down. This formula is used for compound interest, as it says right here. 
So you put money into a bank. How many of you have a savings account at a local bank? Anyone? If you don't have one yet, get one, right? Because you, the sooner you can learn how to manage money and handle money, save money, if you've got a babysitting job or something like that, or your mobile lawns on the side, many of you are too young to have a quote unquote real job yet, but many of you do babysit or something like that. So it'll help you to understand this whole concept of money. And what I would recommend, if you do have a babysitting job or something like that, or you mow lawns, whatever the case may be, always take that money when you get paid and set aside a certain chunk of that money. Like some of it, definitely spend, have a great time spending it, buy yourself whatever you want to buy, go to Starbucks, buy yourself clothes, take boyfriend or girlfriend out for a movie, something like that, right? It's always fun. Um, but always save some money, because then you can make some larger purchases. Like some of you ought to save money and buy a car. Some of you may have to pay for your own gas. So if you can start to accumulate money, so when you get to that time, you won't have to work as hard, and it's a huge bonus. And it'll serve you well for the rest of your life also. Your parents will be proud and impressed by you, which is always a good thing. I'm just changing so I can see more of you on the screen. Okay, um, so A is the balance, like how much money you have in your account. So now that you actually put your little hand up thing if you've already, if you finish writing all this stuff down before I start to yammer at you again. Are you guys good? Did you write it all down? Hand up thing, you good. So I'll assume some people won't listen to that and just call it good at this point. Okay, so you can take your little right hand thing down, please. And we're going to talk about what these things mean in case the words that they wrote from the textbook do not make sense for you. So balance is the amount of money in your account. So if you don't know what balance is, write down amount of money in your account. Um, principal. They have in parentheses initial deposit. So some of you may not know what that means. It's the like to open a checking account, you probably have to have like 50 bucks in there or something like that. They do that a lot for especially younger kids. It's a nice cat form. Um, so that's the the first amount of money you put into the account. Interest rate, hopefully you understand that. With your savings account. Um, it's honestly almost criminal how much little interest they pay you with your savings account. It's probably less than 2%, usually around 1% for a kid's savings account. But you're still making money by doing nothing. The issue is inflation, so stuff gets more expensive, expensive over time, and that's what inflation is. Inflation historically is about 2.5%. So if you're only getting 1% interest, you're actually losing money by having money in a savings account, which is annoying, but true. But at least you're not losing the whole 2.5%, you're lo only losing 1.5%. So a quick little deal on interest there. And it's the number of times it's compounded per year. So um, they'll look at however much money is in your account, and then apply the interest rate, in this case 4.5%, compounded quarterly. So they're four quarters in a year, just like they're four quarters in a dollar. So that means they're going to apply that 4.5% four times per year. So that's what quarterly means. Other words they'll use for quarterly, or not for quarterly, but other amounts of time. So compounded daily, 365. They're compounded monthly. How about if they compound it weekly? In the chat, I want you to answer how many weeks are in a year? There's many high school kids that don't know the answer to that question. It's kind of important that you do. So if you don't know, you're going to learn it today. We got 56 and 52 guests, another 52. Thank you, guests.
we got 56, 52, 53, and a lot of 52s. If you wrote 52, you are correct. There are 52 weeks in a year. So I had one student last period, he's like, well, they're 12 months in a year. They're four weeks in a month. So is it 48? Well, if you think about it, how many days are in a month? It's either 30 or 31, except for February, which has 28. And in a leap year, you have 29 days, right? So every four years, they add an extra day. That keeps the calendar in sync, you know, with all the, um, just make sure it doesn't get off. Because if they didn't add that extra year, then like a thousand years from now, winter would not be in December, it would be in June. It would just kind of move slowly over time. So that's why they did the leap year thing. Um, so that's compounded for the end. T is time in years. We're going to plug this stuff in. So let's read it first. Suppose that when your friend was born, your friend's parents deposited 2000 in an account paying 4.5% interest compounded quarterly. What will the account balance be after 18 years? Okay, so this is a good example of like a college fund you might create for your future children. Don't think about it yet, but you will eventually if you have kids, that is. Um, so let's highlight the key information in this. So they deposited two grand. It's paying 4.5 interest. Compounded quarterly is also important. And then you want to know what it is after 18 years. So I'll give you a minute to write that down. As soon as you're done writing that down, do the little hand raising so I know that I'm not moving too fast. And I'll give you a minute to write. That was fast, Lauren. I always used to write slowly, so social studies classes especially were a nightmare because you're taking so many notes. Austin's got like 17 cats, in case you wanted to know. That's one of 17 that looks like it's trying to claw them to death. Your, your cat was not into that move. <laughs> Too bad you got Yeah, I don't think he was. Yeah. He was holding it like on his shoulder and the cat's like, <coughs> So hand up thing when you're done writing, please, so I know. And then I won't wait for every single person because, you know, people forget. Okay, take the hand raise thing off, please, and we will move on, start plugging into the formula. So we're trying to answer what A is, so we're not plugging anything in for that. The T is the principal, the amount of money you started with, in this case is $2,000. Now we have the parentheses from the formula. So that one plus is like the 100% of the money you started with. And 100% divided by 100 is 1. So that's why they have the 1 there. Then we have the R is the interest rate for the numerator of the fraction in the percent. So if we take 4.5, because we can't mix numbers and percentages, otherwise you get massively incorrect answers. So we're going to take 4.5% and divide it by 100 to make it into a decimal. So you can also think about moving that decimal to the left. So it should be 0 0.045, but I always like to double check in the calculator. So 0 0.045, good. So that's what goes in the numerator of this fraction. So we're going to take 0 0.045 and then the n in the denominator of the fraction represents how many times it's compounded. So four quarters in a dollar, four quarters in a year. We're going to divide that by four. I'm going to erase my little division problem over here just so it's not basically confusing. And then we're going to raise it to the NT power. 
So I very much recommend that you put that exponent in parentheses because you'll probably get the problem wrong if you don't. So and repeats, right? So we have 4 times 18 for the years time. So just recognize the fact, and that's where a highlighter or different colors are good when you're taking notes, that will always repeat in the denominator and the exponent the number of times it's compounded. Okay, so bust out the phone or the graphing calculator if you put it away, and we're going to plug this in. Um, when I plug it in, it's a good idea to try to plug it in in its entirety into your phone or calculator. If you have a phone, I think it's virtually impossible to do correctly. If you have a calculator, you can do it correctly. But we need to add one set of parentheses. The first set we already added, well, two sets of parentheses, is in the exponent. So what you could do is just multiply those before and plug that in. The second thing we want to do is add a parenthesis around that fraction. So we're going to have a double parenthesis at the end. Clevis, was that a question or did you just forget to take the raise hand thing off? Clevis is off playing video games right now. Question, what's your question, Clevis? You can type it in or on you. Uh, yeah, okay. So, I don't think I did it right. All right, you will see. So I'm going to plug this in. I'm just going to clear all this stuff out. We have 2,000 and 1 plus. I'm going to put this in parentheses, 0 0.045 divided by 4, and then double close the parentheses. Then I'm going to raise it to the 4 times 18 power. So you could just do 4 times 18, which is 72, and plug that in for the exponent. You could also, if you have a phone only, you could just divide that uh, fraction inside of the parentheses and add 1 to it, so it makes it easier to do. But you should have got $4,475.53. Clevis, can you take your little hand off? Thank you. Alright, so it's helpful if you use the raise hand thing if you have a question. I look at the screen a bunch, so you can also just raise your hand. Plug in, Clevis, no worries. Um, so I'm just going to copy this to a new page because I want to talk to you about a little nasty trick thanks playing on you. Austin, question? No, I'm going to take the thing off. Alright, no worries. Okay, so here's the little nasty trick, thanks. Uh, how they make many millions of dollars more off all you people, including myself. You keep bumping it by accident, Austin. So, all this stuff after, so 53, the 3 is to a penny, right? So this stuff right here, the bank just keeps, right? So if you think about it, this zero would represent a tenth of a penny, this one would represent a hundredth of a penny, the six would represent a thousandth of a penny, and the two would represent a ten thousandth of a penny. So you think, who the hell cares? They're keeping like a tenth of a penny, what's the big deal? To you, over time, it may not make that much of a difference, but if you think about a bank, and the billions of transactions they make, all of this money right here at the end will be millions and millions of dollars, right? So that's one way banks are weasels and they keep your money. So even if this number right here, after the three, is above five, like five and above, give it a shove and you would round up, the bank doesn't give you any more than the three pennies here. They won't give you four pennies. They keep all the extra for themselves. So it's just a little weasel, um, weasel pick. Do I need to read that email right now, Ari? Or eventually I will, during work time. 
Okay? Um, so the bank keeps the extra change, essentially. So there are weasels. So our answer here, your $2,000 initially at 4.5% interest would result in that 18-year-old getting $4,000. Don't forget units. $4,475 in 50, that's not a five, 53 cents. Yeah, I can't really do it in the middle of the lesson, Ari. So $4,475 and 53 cents. Unless your life is in danger, I'll read it right now. Okay. So, that's the answer to that question. All right. So we already wrote this formula down. We're going to read problem number three. So we're modeling exponential decay. So remember with decay, we're starting at the one or the hundred and subtracting. And then we're going to change it into a decimal after that. So just keep that in mind as we do this problem. We're talking about decay. So when you do problems in your homework, it won't always tell you it's growth or decay. You have to read the problem and figure out whether it's growth or decay. They're not, because it's L number one, they're not going to be overly tricky about it. They'll use words like increase and decrease, increase growth, decrease decay. So it'll be relatively transparent, straightforward. Um, but you may have to figure it out, more of the story. So this one is about physics. So the kilopascal is the unit of measure for atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 101 kilopascals. For every 1,000 meter increase in altitude, the pressure decreases about 11.5%. What is the approximate pressure at an altitude of 3,000 meters? So we're going to highlight some key information on this problem. So first key information is we start at 101 kilopascals. I'm highlighting the kilopascal because that's going to be your unit at the end of the problem. And then for every, this is really important here, for every 1,000 meter increase, because that's going to determine our exponent. So we're talking in thousands, okay? In altitude, the pressure decreases. We already know they're talking about decay, but if they didn't tell you at the beginning, the decreased portion of the program would tell you that it's decay. So it decreases 11.5%. And we want to know what the approximate pressure at an altitude of 3,000 meters. So I'll give you a minute to write that stuff down. And put your little hand up thing, the raise hand button when you're done writing so I know. All right, I've read your email, no problem, man. Okay, so we've got a couple little hand up things. If you're done writing, put the hand up thing up there, please. Lesson not phone, Anna. What? I said lesson not phone. No, I'm doing my calculator. You have a calculator right in front of you. Mm -hmm. There's one on your desk. This one is doing something weird. Ah, something okay. Error. We're good then. I'll show you on the calculator what the issue is, and hopefully we can just figure it out. It looked like you're just firing away on the phone, and you could see why I would say that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Dawson, good luck. Hopefully you got a normal human. So take the hand raising off, please. Looks like we're ready to go. So always when I'm writing these, doing these problems, I always write the formula down first so I make sure I don't screw up. So y equals 
a times b to the x power. A is the amount we started with in this province, 101 kilopascals right here. So y equals 101 times, now we have to figure out the decay factor. So remember if it's decay, we subtract from 100. So we're going to start with 100%. That's what the 101 represents. And we're going to subtract the 11.5%. So as I said before, in these problems, you can't mix percents and numbers. You have to switch it to a decimal. So it's numbers and numbers when you do it. Um, when I do 100 minus 11.5, I get 88.5%. Okay, and then to switch it from a percent to a decimal, I can either move it twice to the left or divide by 100. Parker, take your hand raising off unless you got a question. Thank you. So we're going to divide that by 100. And we're going to get 0.885. I always like to check in the calculator, as I said a million times. So 88.5 divided by 100 is indeed 0.885. That's what goes right here. I would like to put in the zero first just because sometimes you'll miss a decimal point otherwise. Now, the exponent is the tricky part of this problem. So, key information to figure out what that exponent is, is for every thousand meter increase um, in altitude, the pressure decreases to 11.5%. And we want to know what it is after 3,000. Okay, so I'll just pose the question, what do you think the exponent is? You can write it in the chat. You can unmute your mic and tell me there. Anybody in person can tell me what you think it is too. So we have three as a guess so far. And then let's get some people in the chat to guess as well. Educated guess, not complete guess. 3,000 is another guess. There's not a 3 anywhere in this exponent. So if you thought it was 3 or 3,000, take a look, right, at what I have highlighted and try to adjust your thinking and come up with what you think is the correct exponent. More guesses. Thank you for being brave and guessing, Cole. The rest of you can be brave as well, would be the implication of that comment. What do you think? Would you times 11.3 times? It's only, the only thing we're going to use to figure out that exponent is the 3,000 and the or every 1,000 increase. We got 33 as you guessed, too. Thank you for being brave, at least. So if we started at 1,000 and it changes by 11.5% every 1,000, and we're now at 3,000, how many thousands more did it go from 1,000 to 3,000? 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So 2,000, right? But it's for every 1,000. So our exponent is only 2. So that's weird, right, to think about? Because we started at 1,000, and then every 1,000 is where it changes by the 11.5%. So it went from 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000. That's why it's just 2. Okay? Now we're going to throw this in the calculator. But I just want to always talk about this mental math concept. So if it's decreasing, I'm just going to round that 11.5 to 10% because 10% is easier to think about. So if we started at 101, I'm going to also round that to 100. If I subtract 10% of 100, I'd be subtracting 10. 
I subtract 20% because my exponent is 2, then my answer should be around 80, right? So I'm thinking in my head what the answer is before I plug it into the calculator. Every single one of you can start getting used to thinking like that, and it'll help you get more math problems right in the long run. So I'm looking for an answer around 80, and let's see. Well, I know it is because I did this problem last period, but um, we'll double check. Oops. So 101 times 0.885 raised to the second power, and we get 79.11. So remember with this concept that I can tell it is the school Wi-Fi lagging because the computer is not working super fast. So if we're rounding to hundreds right here, we look at the one after the hundreds place and that little thing, five and above, give it a shove. So our answer is going to be 79.11. Okay, just reviewing that whole rounding concept again. So, what is the approximate per atmospheric pressure at 3,000 meters? The approximate atmospheric pressure is 79.11 good old kilopascals. Okay. Pascal was a mathematician. So he must have come up with the whole Kilo Pascal concept. Okay, that is it. Except we're going to talk about this a little bit, just with growth and decay. So if we look at this first problem, they're asking you what is the growth factor. So what number in that equation represents the growth factor? Answer in the chat. You can hold fingers up too, that's fine. What number represents a growth factor? You're just identifying what's in the position, that position in the formula. Show me with your fingers. Yes, Austin, you're right. Put them down just so people don't cheat. Lauren, good. Other people, yep, yep, yep. You're good, yep. Nice. Yeah, that's right, Shay. Dave was doing a, like, a little finger action in there. That was the all one of those has got to be, right? So it should be four as a growth factor. I want you to figure out now what the percent increase is. So how did we arrive at that four in the formula? I'm going to kind of walk you through it first so you can understand it, because if I have you guess first, it's going to confuse the heck out of you. So, Remember, we also have to consider that 100% we started with, and that 100% as a decimal is 1, because we do 100 divided by 100, which is 1. So we have to do is take that 4, the growth factor, subtract the 1, and we get 3. And if we want to know what percent that is, instead of dividing by 100, to go from a decimal to a percent, we multiply by 100. So that's a good little helpful thing to write down. So to go from decimal to percent, you want to multiply it by 100. Okay, so if we multiply 3 by 100, it's going to be a 300% increase. Okay?
So we know its growth or increase because that 4 was greater than 1. If we look at this one, that's less than 1, so we know it's decay. So if we have a decay factor of 0.2, We want to figure out what is the percent decay. So, if we look at what we did here, we did the growth factor minus one. To get the K, we do 1 minus the growth factor, or decay factor in this case, sorry. 1 minus decay factor. So what does that equal? 1 minus 0 0.2 equals 0 0.8. So what we did above was the growth factor minus 1. Now we're doing 1 minus the growth factor. So those are two like opposite kind of problems we're doing. So we get 0.8, and then if I want to make that into a percentage, I multiply it by 100. So times 100, which would equal 80% decay. So I'm not going to beat you up with problems like this by any stretch, but I just want to introduce it to you because if I have you again junior year, your experience of seeing some of these kinds of problems will help you. Um, it's difficult for even the juniors that I teach, so just make sure that you're, you can go back and listen to the video to help you understand this thing because um, it's not easy to understand. But basically, for growth, you do 1 minus, you do the growth factor minus 1. For decay, you do 1 minus the decay factor. So it's kind of obvious. Can you go up a little bit? I can. Is that good? That is super laggy. You've got the homework is posted, so you can start on that. I'm going to write it down once I get to the next page, just so we make sure we're all good. Austin, you have a question, or you just keep bumping it by accident? Bumping good. Okay, no worries. Um, are you good, Charlotte? problems instead of just assigning you like evens or odds. So I'm going to write it off to the side here. Page 464. So you, some of you guys will write the page number, forget the problems. Others will write the problems and forget the page number. you got to have both. I'll check, Dominic. It should be looking week 11 or you can click on the calendar, but I'll double check to make sure it is posted. Regardless, you can start it because it's up on the screen here. Um, 9 through 14. So if I don't say evens or odds, that means it's all. 9 through 14, 16 through 18, 20 through 22, and two more, 27 and 33. We are going to take a mass break. Any questions before I go? At least probably access time will work the best. Okay, we're going to take a mass break, so I'm going to lock the door so we're all good, and I'll remember to turn my mic off this time. Let's go. Mass break. Did you figure it out on the...
the great stuff we were talking about at the beginning of the class? No, not yet. Okay, cool. Let's go. Mask break. Put that mask on, Anna. I don't want to get COVID. All right, go on up. You know where to go. Around this way, down the stairs, I'll be right behind you. Go ahead. Gentlemen, good job. It's important. A lot of people don't do that stuff, you know? People appreciate it. Huh? Hey, here's class. I mean, I guess. All right. Get the code number. Okay. Great. Let go speech three.
Yeah. Your name again? Mr. Leader, we just passed his room. Tell the worst jokes. Math. He teaches stats, advanced pre calc. I think that's it. Come on in. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been a while. A oh, while. A while. All right, we're back. Let me know if you got a question. You guys have 17, 16 and a half minutes. So you can start working on the assignment or you can just chill and find either way. Um, how do you do number 11? Number 11. So, we're going to do our related up here. So, first of all, is it growth or decay? Do you know, Charlotte? No. So, remember that very first slide we talked about greater than one growth less than one decay. So because of that 0.01, it's a, just a smidge bigger than one, so it's growth. So growth factor. So A would be the 25,600. And the growth factor B in each exponential function. Let me see if they want you to do anything other than just that. Because that seems kind of silly if you ask me. I don't know if they want you to figure out the percent. It would be 1% growth, because you do 1.01 .01 minus 1. So you get 0 0.01, then multiply that by 100, and you get 1%. But I'm just going to check the solutions here and see if they want you to do anything other than that. No, they literally just want you to identify A and B from that Y equals A times B to the X formula. So you oh, okay. A, I guess over here. I know. Yeah. That's, that's understandable because it seems too easy. What's the answer for search? So the for initial B. amount would be for C? For B. For B. Okay. The percent rate of change is 4%. So the growth factor is 1 plus, because you have to change the 4% into a decimal, so it's 1 plus 0 0.04, um, which equals 1.04. Okay. Okay. I forgot to stop my recording. I will do so now.